Iedereen heeft wel eens een virus op zijn computer gehad, maar slechts weinig mensen weten hoe betrekkelijk eenvoudig het is geworden om met behulp van een botnet en een, bijvoorbeeld een Trojan serieus geld te verdienen. Bij ons is vandaag Etai Mauer van RSA en hij gaat laten zien hoe je zo'n botnet bestuurt en bijvoorbeeld bankfraude kan plegen. Etai, thanks for being here. Um, can you tell us what your job at RSA is? Yeah, my, my job is I'm the fraud action research manager. We do analysis of advanced Trojans. So, um, how easy has it become to make money um, using botnets? It's become very easy. Uh, if we've been, you've asked me this question six years ago, I'd say it's pretty complex. The people who write this code are the people who operate the Trojans, and it's a pretty complex situation. Today, they made it very user-friendly with nice interfaces, so just about anybody, you don't have to be real technical savvy, can run these Trojans. So, wh what are you going to show us uh, today? Uh, what I'm going to show you today is pretty interesting. I'm going to show you how to actually manage a botnet how you create a Trojan, you configure it, and then we're going to see after infection what you can see your victims are doing, you, how data is stolen, how pictures are stolen, and make money out of that. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, shall we start? Okay, so first thing I have here is I have the uh, SpyEye Trojan. SpyEye Trojan is a very popular Trojan today in the underground. The reason is it's really easy to use. When you buy the SpyEye Trojan, this is what you receive. You receive several folders and files. Let's quickly go over the files just so I understand what we're looking at. spy.exe is the executable. This is what you run in order to create the infection file. Um, what I have here is an Ubuntu system. Um, we're going to run this on a virtual machine which runs a Windows-based system. Then we have a main control panel server and collectors.txt. These are configuration files. Every Trojan, after infection, needs to know where to send the information it steals to. And it also needs to communicate with the command and control. The command and control is where it receives uh, new configuration files and may receive new orders. And this is how you configure it. Now, it sounds really difficult, but it's really easy. Let's take a look, for example, in the collector's file. This is where the Trojan will send the, in, uh, the uh, information it stole. So if we take a look into this, you can see it's pretty easy. I don't know if we can really make it out, but it's only an IP with a port. So this is how you configure the Trojan to send information. It sounds difficult, it's not. If you want further uh, drop points, further uh, in, uh, places where the information will reach, you can just add them here. It's that easy. And it just communicates over HTTP. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, and then we have three folders here, plugins, screenshots, and web injects. In the plugin sections, we have plugins for the Trojans. These are added features. So for example, in this case, we have, for example, a Firefox certificate grabber, USB spreading mechanisms, FTP backconnect, SOX5, which is a proxy. Basically, you can add functionality. If you know how to program uh, plugins, you can do this. If you don't, you can buy this online. As an example, SpyEye, when it was released, uh, was only targeting uh, Explorer and Firefox. Later on, there was a demand from, uh, uh, from the people who buy it to also support Chrome and Opera. So the authors wrote Chrome and Oprah plugins and sold them for $600 each. You buy it, you drag it in here, and you have new functionality. These are the plugins. Next is screenshots. This is where you configure the Trojans to take uh, screenshots from. Now you may ask yourself, well, if I have a Trojan on the infected system, I steal everything that he's typing. Why would I need to take screenshots? The reason is some uh, websites use virtual keyboards as a security measure. Then nobody types in anything, and you need to take a screenshot of where the mouse clicked. This so it takes a screenshot every time you click. Yeah. Exactly. Every mouse event, it will take a, a picture. Now, it sounds, again, might be difficult to configure, but it's really not. Here is uh, the configuration. You simply put in the domain you want to target, and then the size of the picture in pixels. What we see here in the first line is my demonstration site, where I will show um, the complete demo on. And last but not least is the web injections file. This is where you configure injections for the, um, for, for the spy I Trojan. Basically, injections means I will be adding new HTML lines of code to what the user is seeing. So we have to keep in mind the user will be accessing the website he's always accessing, a bank website, a commercial site, and he will see new information he has never seen before. Now, it's really easy to create such injections. You don't have to be an, uh, an advanced programmer. All you have to do is tell the Trojan, every time you see this domain, you look for this line of code. In this case, I'm looking for when the user is being asked or prompt for the password. And you will inject this data. So I will ask the user for the credit card number, for the expiration date, and the CVV. 
This is a very simple injection. Some of the in these injections can be very complex and include complete scripts. So I'm just a simple example. Uh, the most simple, the, the most simple example I could give. Again, it can be very long with validation, and you can inject complete scripts. Once you have a, uh, something on the victim's computer, you can basically do whatever you want. So these are the HTML injections. So we've just configured our Trojans. We have the plugins. We have the screenshots, web injections. I also told it where uh, the control panel is and where the uh, drop server is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our configured file from our Ubuntu system, and I'm going to drop it into a shared folder. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you um, a Windows-based system now. So I'll open virtual a virtual machine. Here's our XP Service Pack 3 uh, virtual machine. I will copy the Trojan we have just configured over here. And let's open this. And here's our SpyEye uh, Trojan that we configured. You can see SpyEye with the uh, nice logo. And I'm going to run SpyEye, but as soon as I do, I'm going to get an error. The reason I get an error is because this is a software. You need to buy it. Uh, I don't have the license, so I'll just patch it. And kudos to the person who wrote the patch. There we go. <laughs> Took a little bit of time. And here we have the uh, SpyEye uh, uh, Builder. This is where I create the infection file. Uh, you can see here it's looking for the main control panel server and control uh, collectors.txt that we had before. We need to give an encryption. We'll just type something random in here. And I'm not going to go really over all the different functions, uh, but notice this little nice function here, kill Zeus. So it knows how to remove Zeus from an infected system. Which is also a botnet. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Zeus is the largest uh, uh, Trojan, uh, uh, the most popular Trojan out there. And the peers, people behind Spy said, well, if I'm infecting people, most likely these people have got infected before. And if they got infected before, it's likely to be with Zeus. Um, so it knows how to remove uh, Zeus. Um, no, this is not a good antivirus for Zeus. Don't use this as an antivirus. Um, now we have three buttons here, web injects. Uh, screenshots and plugins, which are exactly the folders we've seen before. If I hover with the mouse over them, you can see it says click me. If I click, it will add that functionality. So now we have the web injects file included. Screenshots, click, we have the screenshots, and plugins, click, and we have the uh, plugins. Uh, now we can give our Trojan a nice name. Let's call it Yos. This is your Trojan. And now we have a very important button here, make config and get build. Notice they separated the configuration file from the build. The reason is, say I'm a bad guy and I've infected 100,000 people in Netherlands, and my Trojan is targeting three big banks. But now I want to have a new uh, uh, adventure out there and target some more banks. Instead of infecting 100,000 people, which will take time and it's difficult, I can just send a new configuration file to all the infected computers, telling them, hey, those three banks that I targeted, that's great. But I want to target these couple commercial sites and these new banks. So, and I'll show you later how to do this from the command and control. If I click on make config and get build, you will see it creates the configuration file. So this is the file I can use to reinfect people, or not really reinfect, but update the infection, infected computers. And I can also click on get build. And here is our executable. This is the file we'll be using to infect people with. So I'm going to take this file and copy it to my shared folder. Another thing that I wanted to point out is the fact that we have another button here, are you infected by SpyEye? So Spy has the ability to detect, have I infected myself? The reason is, this is super popular Trojan. A lot of people, uh, uh, criminals, small time criminals, see, hey, I, I want to have a Trojan. I want to buy this and use this. They buy, they say, oh, let's configure it. Let's give it a name. Excellent. And then they find this file here and they double click it and they infect themselves. So, in order to avoid that, Spy, I can tell you if you're infected. So, right now I haven't clicked on this. So, if I ask it, it says, your system is clean. But if I infect myself, you see the file is gone. And it says now, you're infected. You, and you can, can actually cure it. And I can okay. actually cure it. Again, not a good idea as like an antivirus. So now we have uh, our version ready. I'm going to go to a different virtual machine and infect it. This is my Windows 7 virtual machine. I'm going to go to my shared folder. And let's pull the Trojan over here. 
This is my infection file. And normally you would infect somebody with a drive-by download or... Right, there are many ways to get infected. We also seen here there's USB spreading mechanism, so I can spread this to USB. But drive-by is probably the most popular and best way. The user has no idea. It goes into a legitimate site that was hacked, and the Trojan just downloads to his computer without him knowing this. I'm going to emulate as if it, this has been done. Okay. So I have my Trojan here, so I'll double-click it, and it's gone. But it's already in the system, and I can actually check that if I look into uh, the computer's memory, I can search for the uh, memory mutex. Now we give it the name Yoast, and it's searching the memory, and there it is. <laughs> so our Trojan is running in the memory with your name. Congratulations, this is your Trojan. Um, so I'll shut this down, and now remember this is a victim's computer, so this might be me at home. So if I'm at home, usually when I open my computer, I open um, Explorer, and I go to Google. Well, I'm originally actually from uh, Israel, so let's just put Google COIL, and here's Google COIL, here's my virtual keyboard, let's search for something. I'll change the language to English, and I'll type my name, E-T-A-Y, and I can search that, whatever, I'm just using, browsing. Using the, uh, the, the, the on-screen keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm going to go to my bank website. But before I go to my bank website from my infected computer here, let's go to the bank website from a clean machine. So notice I'm going to open Firefox from the Ubuntu system, and... I'm going to open a demo website that I use uh, that imitates a bank website. So here's my internet bank website. Looks pretty standard. You have all the links. You have a nice picture of people looking into the future, which also always gives me comfort. And then you have username and password. This is the real site. This is the uh, URL. If I go to the same website from my infected computer, and notice I'm not going to go to a phishing website. It's not something I received an email or clicked. I'm going to the real website that I always go to. If I go to the website, it looks exactly the same, but there are new fields here. Credit card, expiration date, and CVV. This is the HTML injection we've seen before. Now, a victim would be unsuspecting in this case because he didn't go into a fake website. He goes to the real website he always goes to. And sometimes the fraudsters are smart enough to also add a message saying, oh, we're sorry, due to new security reasons, we also need your credit card for validation. So if I'm an unsuspecting victim, I will write my name here and I will enter my password and maybe my credit card and CVV and so on and click login. Now, I won't enter this time because this is not a real username, but everything that I'm doing is captured by the Trojan. So now, let's step back and move from the victim's computer to the command control and let's see what the bad guy sees while this is happening. So I'm going to open the command and control for SpyEye and here it is. You can see it's very user-friendly, uh, lots of colors. It's not very hard to understand what's going on here. I can click on Find Info, Submit, and Notice. And so you just see everything that the victim typed. Basically. Exactly. This okay. is the key logging feature. And you can see here, I'm sorry, here we go. Username, password, itai. Sorry, it keeps jumping. Username, password, data, and so on. Everything that I've entered is right here with all the information. Very easy to find, very easy to go through. Now, another feature that we have here that we've seen before is the screenshots. So I configured it to take screenshots. Let's take a look what it did. You can see here, when I went to Google COIL, it noticed that I clicked on the virtual machine, clicked it a couple of times. And then every time I clicked, it took a picture. So here is the E, T, and so on, and it also captured, as soon as I went to the bank website, where I clicked. So these are the screenshots. So as you can see, it's very user-friendly, very easy to use. Now, another, there are a lot of different functions here. I'm not going to really go through all of them, but what I want you to notice is the credit card grabber. If I click on the credit card grabber, you'll notice that there's nothing here. It's empty. The reason is, I, the Trojan is looking for real credit card numbers. It actually validates the... Um, the credit card number. Exactly. What it does, it looks for 16 digits that pass the Loon algorithm, which is the credit card uh, validation algorithm. The reason behind this is we're targeting specific entities. But if my one of my victims goes to a commercial website and enters a credit card number, that's good information. I want that information. I can sell that credit card to other bad guys. 
Um, but it validates that it's a real number. So if I go back to my computer, to my infected computer, and I enter a, a credit card number that will pass the Loon algorithm, for example, 4444-3333-2222-1111 passes the Loon algorithm, I click on login, the Trojan will log this information. So if I go back to my command and control, and I go to the credit card grab and click, you'll see that all of a sudden there is information here, and here's the number that it captured. So these guys are very sophisticated and they look for a lot of information. This is one side of things. The other side is you also have to manage your bots. And you have a control panel for managing your bots. And this is what it looks like. Now first, right off the bat, we can see that our botnet that you and I just created is up and running and everything is good. You can see here it says there are two botnets and both of them are live. These are the two virtual machines which are now open, the XP and the Windows 7. Both now, are infected. Exactly. Yeah. Now. Um, I'm not going to go through all the different functions here. We can see how many bots we infected per day, and we can see some statistics. Here's a very interesting option, update bot. Remember I told you that if you already infected 100,000 people, you can send them new configuration file without infecting them again. You just create the, new, the configuration file, you upload it here, click on upload, and all your victims will be updated with a new configuration file. We can also follow and see which plugins are installed, and, and so on and so on. The basic idea here, it's really easy to use. It's very user friendly. And like I said before, if you don't know how to use this, there are manuals, there are people who will answer questions. This is the reason why Trojans are so popular today. It's so easy. So what can you do as, as a, a, a customer to prevent this from happening? It's pretty difficult to, to, to actually prevent this. I would, I would say there's no one silver bullet. I mean, I can't say install an antivirus and your problems are solved. You have, to inst you have to have an, an antivirus. Make sure that all your uh, updates on your computer are up to date, uh, because this is usually what drive by and exploits used to get into your computer. Um, and of course, stay smart. Uh, don't, don't open attachments you're not familiar with. Uh, if you go on Facebook and there's um, somebody tagged you in a movie and you never saw that person before, don't click on the movie. Just stay vigilant. Hey Tai, thanks for being here. Nou, we weten nu hoe relatief eenvoudig het eigenlijk is om als onwetende internetcrimineel geld te verdienen met behulp van een botnet. En we weten hoe belangrijk het is om je software up-to-date te houden en antivirus software te draaien.